Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Now I'm going to have to be honest with you guys. I've literally spent the last 20 minutes filming an intro because I was so self-conscious of how I wanted to start this reading vlog and what I actually wanted to say in this reading vlog. So if you guys don't know, I normally don't put out a lot of reading vlogs. The only reading vlogs that I do put out are for readathons that I'm hosting with my booktube friends or my bookstagram friends. So the past reading vlogs that I did post were tied to the historical romance readathon or the paranormal romance readathon. But I figured that I wanted to dabble a little bit into weekly reading vlogs or just reading vlogs because I wanted to see if I could be like interesting or aesthetically pleasing and you know just try out different videos to see what my viewers want to see. I personally really enjoy reading vlogs. It depends on the booktuber but I like reading vlogs because I get to learn more about the booktuber and the personality behind the screens. You know usually reading vlogs are casual and we get to learn more about the personalities. We get to learn more about their hobbies. We get to learn more about the things that they do and then obviously you know the aesthetics of it is just so cute and so pretty to film b-roll i don't know for this reading vlog i really don't have too many plans i know like a lot of people pick out books that you know their most anticipated reads that they want to read for their reading vlog or maybe they have a specific like genre that they want to pick up to read and then they can discuss more about it for this reading vlog super casual it's just going to be some books that have been on my radar for a very long time or books that are expiring soon on my Libby that I have to return, or just books that I have to read for some book clubs that I am in. In the month of July, I've actually started three book clubs, and it's simply because I wasn't invited to join any book clubs before, so I figured if you can't join them, make them yourself. So I've started two book clubs that feature some friends from Bookstagram and also from Booktube that I will be announcing sooner or later because they are going to be set in August but I did start a third book club with one of my best friends in real life which I'm really excited to start with. She is a casual reader. She's not like an intense reader like us or like me who has a booktube channel, who has a bookstagram, who has a book talk, and who has a book twitter and who talks to publishers and who goes to publisher parties. No that's not her. She likes to read books casually. She likes to you know pick up a book here or there, you know do the occasional binge here and there but other than that she is just a casual book lover which is like totally fine which I totally really enjoy and I want to have conversations with her with so I asked her hey like do you want to start a book club with me and she was a hundred percent down so we picked up one of the romantic comedies that were on the top of my list ever since the start of summer which is called The Layover by Lacey Walden. I've talked about this book a lot in my book recommendation videos specifically my summer book recommendation videos and a part of me feels bad that I do recommend books that uh, I haven't read before. Um, mostly because, you know, like they can either swing one way or the other, right? Like they can either be really good or they can be really bad. But I always give you like a quick forewarning that I didn't read this book. So you have to take this recommendation with a grain of salt. For the past few book recommendation videos that I have been putting out, I did include some books that I haven't read yet. And I read them subsequently afterwards and I didn't end up liking them. So sorry, but hopefully you guys like them better than me. I'm sure they're good books and I'm just a very picky, picky, picky reader. So hopefully I'll really like The Layover too by Lacey Walden. So a very quick synopsis of The Layover, it's basically about a flight attendant who hates the pilot and they both get stranded in this country that is really amazing and it's really beautiful but they're stranded together on this resort so now they have to spend a lot of their time together and obviously they get to know each other more and they learn more about each other's pasts and histories and things like that. My best friend has actually already read it but I finally got my hold of the audiobook available at my library this week so I'm totally excited to pick it up and listen to the audiobook. It's only nine hours so it shouldn't take me too long. Now today is actually Tuesday the day that I'm starting this reading vlog and I have only finished one book so far which is kind of upsetting because I usually finish a book a day no problem. Monday kind of flew by me and I just wasn't in the mood for reading. Um, I was just 
just like not having it. I was too busy editing one of my videos, which is like my most recent, most anticipated reads reaction video. And I spent way too long editing that video and it drove me crazy. So I didn't end up reading any books on Monday or at least finishing any books on Monday. But this week I finished book number three in the Raja series by Sonali Dev. And I absolutely love this series. It's a Jane Austen retelling series. The first book is called Pride, Prejudice, and Other Flavors. I loved it. It's based on Pride and Prejudice. Our characters are so stubborn in that book and there are so many like evil characters too as well that you just hate so much and you have like very like raw emotions towards this book and I know a lot of my friends actually started reading this book and they couldn't stand it and they had to put it down a couple of times but I told them like you have to persist because there's going to be redemption arcs for our main characters and I know they suck right now but they're going to get better so please read them and they did and they absolutely loved it so I loved Pride of Prejudice and other flavors then the second book came out which is the recipe for persuasion which I also really enjoyed too as well it's based on Jane Austen persuasion it's a second chance romance it's about our two characters who have their each other struggles they're on like a cooking show together and they have a grand time and they get to finally learn of like what actually happened way back when and why they were separated it was good but it wasn't like as good as Pride Prejudice and other flavors mostly because that was the first book that I read from Sonali Dove and it impacted me the most and I guess like the second book had some themes in it that I didn't really like which is like a sports romance theme. Our hero was like a very famous soccer player and there was always an element of celebrity-ness into it that I didn't really like. I don't like it when like the press and the paparazzi and like the fame elements get into the romance. I feel like it's super materialistic and it's just too much of a fictional story for me because I don't relate to celebrity romances. Do I feel like that Chris Evans will spot me on the street and fall in love with me? No, I don't. So that's why I don't tend to pick up celebrity romances. But I was very interested in reading the third book that just came out this month called Incense and Sensibility. And now this one is a retelling of Sense and Sensibility. And if you guys don't know the plot line to Sense and Sensibility, it involves two sisters who are the opposites of each other. You know, one represents sense, the other one represents sensibility. One likes to follow the rules, the other one likes to follow their emotions. But they both end up finding suitors that they really like and that they want to marry. And it, they feel like it's like their perfect match but then it turns out that those two guys are actually big a-holes and that they're not perfect for them at all and they get their hearts broken and they have to rely on their sisterhood to get through it. It was a great book. I like that Jane Austen novel like all the other Jane Austen novels that I did read. Incense and Sensibility followed that plot line. It's a retelling of it and it followed our hero who is actually introduced to Pride, Prejudice, and Other Flavors. He has such a sad background guys. Like honestly when I was listening to the audiobook of this I literally felt like that Sonali Dev did not give this character a break like he went through tragedies that took place from high school all the way into college that still impacted his current years so basically what happens is that our main hero had all these bad things happen to him and then he's going to be running for like a candidate position in the government. And I forget which candidate position he's going to be running for, but he's in politics. And he is a person of color. He's Indian descent. And a lot of people don't like that. So actually in the first chapter and also in the synopsis of the book, he actually gets shot at. And now he is dealing with the repercussions of all this hate crime and this anxiety that comes with the fact that he's been shot at and that somebody close to him almost died because of him. So he needs to learn to better control himself and his anxiety and his emotions on stage or else he's never going to be elected as a candidate. So he actually turns back to a family friend who performs a lot of yoga and does a lot of like emotional training and balance and like things like that. And that just so happens to be a girl that he has never stopped thinking about ever since they met and ever since they shared their first kiss with each other and that just so happens to be our main female heroine. Now this book also followed some tropes such as fake dating not between our main hero and our heroine and it also involves some trigger warnings of sexual assault and also 
basically emotional manipulation and emotional abuse, not between our two main characters. Now, this one was really tough to get through. When I was listening to the audiobook of this, I was like, oh my god, like it's so tense. It first started off like pretty heavy because we got the shooting scene already, but then in the middle, it kind of lulled a bit, and, you know, something that you can stomach. But then towards the end, you get this very anxious feeling building inside of you because you get to meet the characters kind of like for the first time where they kind of reveal their true selves and they're really talking straight from like what they feel deeply inside they're not holding back anymore and some of the characters you just want to throttle because you just want them out of the picture because they're evil and they're stopping our main characters from being in love so this one it was really tough to get through like i said again it was good because it invoked so much emotion in me like i said before if you feel something from the books then it means that the author did their jobs whether it be a good feeling or a bad feeling hopefully the bad feeling is directed towards the characters and not because the characters made really stupid mistakes and you hate the whole book for it if you get what i'm saying i felt anxious because our evil characters were really evil and i just didn't like them but overall this book i would have to give it a three and a half out of five stars and the reason why i'm giving it a three and a half out of five stars was because i felt like it was way too long for our two characters to get their heads out of the sand and to just make decisions for themselves because they took so long with revealing the truth with talking to each other about their true emotions and their feelings with talking to each other about their vulnerabilities and their past dark histories like it was just too long like I remember staring at my audiobook and I'm realizing that like we're 70% in and our two characters have not been truthful with each other so that's why it's just going to be a three and a half out of five stars for me it's going to be my lowest rating in the series and it's sad but I really enjoyed the ride of the series each book is super long like I think the first book was like 500 pages the second one was like 487 pages and this one was 400 pages too so you're going to have a good time though that's what I'm going to say you're never going to have a dull moment with this book go check it out <laughs> for what I'm going to be reading for tonight. I actually have one hour left of this book called The Consequence of Falling by Claire Contreras and I'm so eager to finish it. I love Claire's books. Like I started reading her books like last year. I only read one but I really liked it. I forgot about her. Oops, sorry Claire. And then I read another book by her this year that I really liked called The Heartbreaker and then it sparked my memory that I liked Claire's writing. So now I'm diving back into some books that she's written in the past. So this one's called The Consequence of Falling. It's an enemies to lovers office romance, which is my thing. It gets me by the throat because I just love it so much. This one involves our heroine who is younger than our hero. And they first meet in high school where he is actually hired by her father to be like a, to be a chauffeur. And he is responsible for picking her up from school and that's their first meeting. They kind of have their misjudgments against each other and they both think of each other as the worst person ever and that's what sparks their enemies to lovers. And then afterwards we kind of see the years progress where they are still around each other, they're still in the same circle of friends and they go to the same college and schools and then finally we meet them where they are older adults and then now she is trying to take back the company that her father grew. Meanwhile the father has actually given power over to our hero because our hero has actually done really well for himself. He went from the bottom to the top, he worked really hard in school, got scholarships, graduated from Ivy Leagues and then now he's come back and he wants to take ownership of her family business. So now it's kind of like an enemies to lovers romance between these two characters who have to work together on saving the business and for her to establish herself especially after years of not really doing much. So I really like it so far. It's so cute. It was so fluffy in the first two chapters because like you can just feel that like just because he hates her 
he still cares for her and he still wants the best for her and he's definitely one of those male characters that I hardly see in romance because instead of sugarcoating it for a female heroine he tells it as is and he tells her female heroine that you know you can't slack off and you have to work for the things that you want in life and that you never fight for anything and that you need to start fighting for things in life including this business and he gives reality checks which I feel like that's a very healthy relationship to have from someone so that they can like tell you that you're being too dramatic and that you need to work on yourself. So anyways, really like it so far and I'm gonna come back and give you an update. But for the rest of today, I actually have work to do. <laughs> it is currently 6 p.m. but I do have some overtime work that I want to get working on or at least finish because I started something at work and sometimes when I start something at work I don't like bringing it on to the next day because I don't know what the next day entails so I'll be working this evening on that report and then afterwards when I finish it I'm just gonna log off for the rest of the day and spend some time by myself and enjoy the books that I'm reading because it's not good if you don't have work-life balance I don't know if you guys know this but I tend to work overtime a lot and it's not great it's not fun at all and I feel like my management has been trying to get us to stop working overtime but like sometimes it just happens so we have to better time management ourselves during the work day and that we don't bring work outside of the work hours and then for today right now I'm just going to go for a walk with my mom today was actually her birthday so that's why you saw some birthday cake um, and I'm just gonna go die outside in the heat because we are currently in a heat wave which nobody likes nobody likes I don't know I hate the heat and I'm just gonna burn and melt outside Hi, it's the evening. I changed my shirt, but the makeup is still on. I kind of look a little bit messy right now. Let's forgive myself. We said this was a casual, you know, little book vlog. So this is what we're going to do. I came back from Walmart. I had to do nothing. I literally am just bored. And during the pandemic, my favorite place has been Walmart. Canada does not have Target. Like Target came over to Canada for like a year and then they had to like shut down their whole business line because Walmart Canada dominated the space. This isn't an economic or finance lesson but basically Target had to close all their stores. Everybody has their Target, I have my Walmart. Did I buy anything interesting from Walmart? No, I only bought snacks. I guess snacks are interesting but I wanted to come here to show you that I got some fun little packages and I thought it would be fun if I did a little unboxing because I bought some thrift books and I don't know what it is. Um, they tell you exactly what the title is on the label, but I prefer to keep it as a surprise, like a little surprise bag. I buy so much thrift books off thrift books that I forget what I bought. So it's always a surprise to me and it's always like my little lottery system. Sometimes I get a step back, sometimes I don't get a step back. Sometimes I get a damaged copy of a book that I really wanted or sometimes I get an arc. It's the ongoing joke where I spend a lot of money on thrift books and they constantly scam me money. All right, so the book that we have here is A Breath of Magic by Teresa Medeiros and it has to step back. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Okay, so I've been talking about this book literally in three videos now and now it's going to be my fourth or maybe this is my third video, but I 
bought a lot of Teresa Madero's books and I thought that they had step backs and I was really excited for it until I got it and I realized majority of the books didn't have the step backs and one of the most disappointing finds that I found out in the lot was that Breath of Magic didn't have a freaking step back and I just I really wanted this witchy step back so much so if you guys didn't watch my videos yet Basically, she's a witch. She time travels to 1996, and this is her meeting the billionaire in New York City. Fantastic read. Really enjoyed it. High recommendation for the fall and autumn. You'll see me talk more about this book. Moving on to the second package. We've got Touch of Enchantment. Now, I'm very sad. The biggest con cons me again. It just keeps conning me. So now I have two copies of this book without the step back. Will I try my third attempt of trying to get one with the step back? Possibly, because the step back is really cute and I really want a full set because it's a duology where I get the step back. So this one follows the daughter of the first couple and she actually time travels back into the olden days and that's where she meets our hero who is like kind of like an outlaw or a knight or something like that. I'm maybe like 10% into this book so far and I'm enjoying it like once again. I think Teresa Medeiros is going to be one of my favorite old school authors very very quickly and very very soon. I'm actually trying to collect all her novels. She only wrote like 28 books and I bought a giant lot off eBay so I have majority of it already so I just have a couple more until I have her whole collection. Now moving into the second part of the haul, I got some books from St. Martin's Press. So I'm really excited. So I'm really excited to see what they are. So the book that I got in the mail is one of my most anticipated fall releases, Not Your Average Hot Guy by Gwenda Bond. And now this one comes out on October 5th, 2021. I really, 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 really want to read this book very much, mostly because this one is a paranormal romance. It involves the Prince of Satan, so he is like the son of Satan, and our female character who is human. So she runs a, a escape room business with her mom, and then what happens is that a cult comes into the escape room, and then they summon him, and then now he shows up. And this is their love story. Oh my god, like come on, this screams like fall time and then they gave me some stickers too as well with their new releases so not your average hot guys right here they have the brightest star in paris never fall for your fiance and when sparks fly oh my god so excited to read this one and then sometimes publishers send me random books unsolicited to see if i can feature it in my bookstagram and also in my booktube this one is an adult fiction novel called shoulder season by christina clancy and this one sounds really interesting too as well so our female heroine is only 19 years old but her parents has unfortunately passed away so she has nothing really to do and she doesn't feel really comfortable in her own skin but what happens is that the playboy bunny mansion is nearby and she starts squeezing herself into the bunny costume and she becomes one of the bunnies so i feel like that this one is going to be like kind of like a woman's fiction novel where it focuses a lot on growing up and dealing with yourself and like the maturity of growing up and adulthood as well. And then other books that I got in the mail this week, I wanted to just quickly show off some of the books. This one's called It's Raining Men by Julie Hammerly. And this one looks so cute. I literally bought it because of the title and because of the cover. So It's Raining Men is obviously based on that song, It's Raining Men, uh, come on. Um, so this one, I didn't realize that our heroine was actually a lot older. She's in her 40s and her best friend has finally decided that she's going to get married so she's the single one and she is drowning in her sorrows she thought that she and her best friend would stay single forever so she's very disappointed and then she wakes up from her drunken mess and she realizes that she texted everyone on her phone and all the guys so now she woke up to like 39 responses and all the guys are either rejecting her or actually saying yes. So now this is her speed dating trope. So basically there's two guys that said yes and now she has to date these two guys. So I feel like it's going to be a fun light read possibly. And then the next book that I got in the mail is actually a pre-order called Heartbreak for Hire by Sonia Hartel. And now this one sounds really interesting. I literally pre-ordered this off Amazon mostly because it was heavily discounted for some reason and I had to grab it. This one sounds so fun. This one is about a girl who works for for this company that is heartbreak for hire you hire these people so that they can break up with your significant other for you or get back like revenge on jilted lovers frenemies and long-suffering co-workers and things like that so they are there to get revenge for you i guess and our female heroine works with a group of strong 
around females, but then her boss decides that they're actually going to hire male heartbreakers now. And I think this is going to be an enemies to lovers romance. I think it's going to be so fun. So hopefully I'll get to it soon and I can give you guys my thoughts. So right now it is currently 9.15 p.m. I just came back home from Walmart and I ate dinner and I told you guys that I was going to log back in and do more work and I've been literally contemplating it for throughout my whole dinner but I really I just don't like sitting on work that I could have completed so I think I'm just going to wash off my makeup and then I'm just going to sit down on my desk I'm just going to finish the report that I need to do for work and then I'm actually going to go downstairs to the basement to walk on the treadmill because during my quarantine, I am not exercising as much as possible since I don't need to run to chase the bus or to run to go catch my train to go to downtown to work. So I need to find other sources of exercise, which is actually just like doing my daily walks. And I get very very like OCD with my walks sometimes because I bought a fitness watch and I don't know where I put it but I have a fitness watch and I wear it every single day I take it off for filming because it looks chunky and it looks weird but that fitness watch holds me accountable for my number of steps that I take every single day and I have a goal for myself and if I don't hit it then I don't get a check mark and if I don't get a check mark then I feel bad about myself it's similar to the apple watch with like the exercise rings I don't have an apple phone so I don't need an apple watch I have a samsung phone so I use the samsung active watch that just does the check marks for those of you who are apple users but needless to say I really want to get my steps in and I'm only halfway there so it's going to be at least like a 30 minute walk on the treadmill so today is going to be a very late night I feel like but I also wanted to give you an update that I actually finished The Consequences of Falling by Claire Contreras when I was outside at Walmart and also when I was browsing through other stores and that one was really good in the sense that I gave it a four out of five stars I really enjoyed it but towards the end I had to take a star off mostly because everything happened way too quickly and it was lagging at the same time like our two characters were just so stubborn with each other and they clearly liked each other but they were so stubborn in their ways that they wouldn't either admit it that they were wrong or admit that they liked each other or admit that they all they wanted to do was spend their time with each other or admit their feelings to themselves like for example like our hero was so self-conscious of like how his childhood background was and he was saying like always teasing her going like oh you would have never dated me if I wasn't this successful man and she would be like what are you talking about I liked you for your personality I liked you for who you are I don't care about your money and your success but he would like be very insecure about it which was kind of annoying because she was always showing him like the good side of her but he always had like this like illusion in his head that he was never good enough for her so I found that pretty annoying then there was a part in the story, trigger warning for like just death, that made me teary eyed at the mall because I was just like, oh my God, this is so sad. Like it's one of my, you know, things that make me cry a lot. So when I was like listening to the audiobook of it, I was like blinking away tears as I was like shuffling through clothes and trying to like look for things um, and try not to look like a weirdo. So I really like that part. But then I also had to take a star off because there was just this pinnacle moment where our two characters had this conflict that separated them or that could have an opportunity to separate them forever and for us to not have that happily ever after and I felt like that was just like super cheesy or it just didn't feel realistic because you know the secret that she was holding on was a very personal secret it's like her family secret and I wouldn't expect myself or my significant other to tell me like their personal family secrets when that family member themselves told them not to tell anybody like it's not their secret to tell and I wouldn't get mad at my significant other for not telling me that because it's not their secret to tell and I understand where he's coming from because he feels like he's been part of the family since he's grown up with the whole family and especially with that family member but at the same time like dude like stop getting angry over like things that you can't be angry over for. So this one, still a really good read. It's four out of five stars. Made me have butterflies in my stomach, made me feel really happy. So I definitely recommend you to check this one out. It's probably going to be one of my best books of 2021 too as well. And then during that same trip, I also started listening to the audiobook of The Layover by Lacey Walden. And I must say that this is like one of the perfect recommendations for summer because it literally walks you through the process of what it takes to be a flight attendant and what you have to do to be a flight attendant when you're actually on the job 
job and it's so interesting because you hear about traveling and you hear about like procedures and you hear about this and that and especially during a time where I'm stuck in home and like it, with COVID lockdown for like almost two years now and I haven't traveled in so long and I desperately want to travel it's an escapism and it's a getaway for me I know somebody left a comment on my channel or on that video for my summer reading recommendations video where she actually mentioned that she was a flight attendant and that you know videos like ours and like romance booktuber videos have helped her get through it and I was just like this is like the nicest thing ever and I don't know if it's a good recommendation for you because it might just remind you more about a job that you might really miss so hopefully you still enjoy it as much as I am right now and then halfway through I also got really confused because I thought that he was a pilot but turns out that he was a former pilot and that he turned into a steward steward he and her actually worked together alongside serving the guesses so that's what kind of really confused me and threw me off when I was listening to the audiobook I was like why is the pilot serving peanuts to people and then I realized that he was a steward so anyways really enjoying it right now right now it's sitting around a three out of five stars because there's really nothing that makes me go you know so i'm just gonna keep it at three out of five stars for now and then we'll see if it goes up to a four out of five stars by the end of it i'm excited to have a discussion with my friend over it because like i said this is our club this is our book club pick and we usually have very hilarious and intellectual conversations over characters so it'll be fun it'll be interesting Wednesday. So the last time we saw each other, I was in the middle of reading The Layover by Lacey Walden. And when I tell you that I went on Goodreads and I saw the reviews for the books from my friends, from people that I follow on Goodreads, and the ratings were very low, I was shocked because in true Lisa's fashion, I ended up liking books that a lot of people didn't like. And I ended up giving this one a four out of five stars. And the reason why I gave it such a high rating was because this book literally transported me and made me feel like I was on vacation. I felt like I was on that airplane. I felt like I was the one handing out the snacks, the drinks, taking out the trash, closing the like the cabinet overhead doors, you know, making sure that everybody had their seatbelts on. Like I felt like I was an air stewardess. And then I was running through airports, you know, like chatting with my other colleagues, going to Belize where they were staying majority of the time, going on boats. So if you're looking for a fun summer read, I highly suggest this book. But if you're also looking for maybe like a steamier read or a hotter flirtier read then this might not be the one because I wouldn't say that this book had fate black scenes but it did have a lot of scenes that swerved into a different lane like meaning like they would tease each other a lot and the author would tease us and we would think that there was going to be like a lot of like hot and heavy scenes happening sooner rather than later but it didn't. So I was a little bit disappointed about that. And that's why I had to take like half star off of my five star rating. And then I had to take like another half star to get to the four star rating because like I didn't really like how we were put into the book because we already knew from like page one that our heroine and her then boyfriend were not a good match and we were just patiently waiting for our heroine to just get a grip and to finally understand herself so that she can let go of this piece of corporate trash that she's dating that who is like controlling changing her life being like financially like manipulating her too as well because he earns way more money than her and he's telling her to quit her job and to just stay at home and be a housewife. I'm glad that Lacey took that plot line and cut it in half and didn't drag it on for too long because if it took the whole book for her to realize that her trash boyfriend was not the one for her I would have thrown this book across the room but thankfully the d timing was great and it wasn't annoying. So now the next read that I ended up picking up was actually a thriller novel. I was actually debating whether or not I should pick up A Historical Romance by Teresa Medeiros because I had some audiobooks from a library that I wanted to pick up and read. They're fairly short, they're eight hours, but as soon as I started the audiobook 
I knew it wasn't the one for me at this time because a lot of things were happening and it was very hard to pay attention to those things that were happening while I was like start trying to start my work day and trying to get things settled down. So I ended up putting that one down and I ended up starting a thriller novel called The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. Now Rachel Hawkins actually wrote a lot of like teen books and I never read her adult thriller yet that came out last year but I saw a lot of people on thriller booktube actually read it and I don't know if they liked it but I looked at the ratings right now fairly high 3.7 a lot of the people that we trust and love here on booktube that read thriller novels like Gabby liked it so I'm really excited to read it this one is about a uh, retelling of Emily Bronte's novel The Weathering Heights or Weathering Heights and it features two characters you know Mr. Rochester and then our main female heroine Jane. So if you have not read Weathering Heights, um, Weathering Heights is basically about an orphan that grew up and became educated and then she is like a governess and then she gets hired by this really wealthy man called Mr. Rochester to take care of this little girl and she has to stay at this like house and it's like a gothic romance and our heroine Jane is in that book Weathering Heights she is very timid like I would say that she is very strong um towards the end when she has like that strong character development but other than that she is very kept together like she's a lady right but then in our retelling of The Wife Upstairs our Jane is actually very bold and she feels like that a lot of things are actually owed to her because of her poor upbringing and her dark past. So she steals things from the people that she house sits for and dog walks for. So she is a dog walker. She like walks the dogs of like really rich people in the neighborhood and then she is considered the help and she just like takes little things here and there like little pieces of jewelry here and there. And so she's kind of evil, like she's not a nice person and she wants to climb that social ladder. So she's waiting for, you know, the big fish in the sea so that she can just grab them and hold on to them. So she finds Mr. Rochester, who is our hero, and she is actually smitten by him because he's very charming. He's handsome. He's rich. He owns like a nice house. He has a dog. So like, you know, they're perfect for each other. So this romance kind of like happens really quickly, but keep in mind this is a thriller novel and it's not a romance so it's totally okay with pacing you already know that both characters have ulterior motives and that they're not perfect for each other so you're just like waiting on the sidelines to see how these two corrupt people corrupt each other and you're just trying to see like who's going to be more evil and I don't know I'm loving it so far it's so atmospheric like there's also like a mystery behind it because Mr. Rochester's like wife mysteriously disappeared and she like died on a boating accident apparently and then we don't know where the wife is. So this book really reminds me of another thriller that I really like called Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris and it's like a domestic thriller. It involves like the spouses like not trusting each other and unreliable narrators. It was just great. So I'm loving it so far. I'm 23% into the audiobook. Hopefully that I can get it done by today because I don't know. It's just too good to put it down. And we're back here. So I just finished work around an hour ago. So I don't have anything else to do for tonight because I managed to get my things done. So I don't have to stay late and, you know, do reports and things like that. So that's good for me. But I've been trying to figure out how to film book talks. Now, I'm not really on book talk. I have a book talk account. I uploaded some book talks on there before. Some I'm proud of. Some I'm questioning my life and my sanity over. But I want to try to go on to different platforms and to express myself creatively. And I figured that if I were to do book talks, it would be the funny ones and it would be like the mean ones. So if you want to check it out, definitely go follow me on book talk link down below, or at least my handle is the same as everywhere. Remarkably Lisa, I can't even say my own username, but making TikToks are so hard. Like I do not know how to film TikToks. The sounds are really hard to mimic, like trying to get the angles right. Like just trying to figure out how to like properly film on the app is also very complicated, mostly because the app allows you to do so much editing, but you need to like play around with it in order to get a grip of understanding of how to actually use the app to your advantage. So I'm going to probably spend a lot of time 
time on YouTube and like watching tutorials on how to film TikToks because once I get curious about something, I have to learn how to do it. And then after that, I have to learn how to master it. So we're going to see how far I can get on BookTok. But yeah, it's a growing platform where people are talking about books and I talk about books, so why not go on to that platform as well? I also thought that I should give you a reading update on what is happening with The Wife Upstairs. So right now I am currently more than halfway through. I'm 60% through. I'm pretty happy with it so far. It's really interesting. So now we're getting glimpses of like the wife that disappeared and we get to hear from her side. Like, you know, it's split between her perspective as well as our Jane like main character's perspective as well. I have to say that Jane like our main heroine is completely bonkers like she is so evil like she is literally there to suck Mr. Rochester dry of his money. He She cares about so much about status that she is like pressuring Mr. Rochester to like do all these things so that she can like climb up the social ladder and hang out with the yoga moms and hang out with the rich people in the neighborhood which is like insane to me because I'm like, oh my God, like you think you're the bad person, but wait until you figure out like what he's hiding. And you can start to see that Mr. Rochester's character is actually breaking. So what he does is that he pretends that he's like this really nice guy, he's rich, he's generous, he's like so super nice to everybody around him. So he, of course he's not like a murder suspect or anything, but like underneath that mask, there lies I think a more evil character than we suspect and possibly more evil than our main heroine. So these two characters are completely toxic. They're evil and I just can't wait for them to bite into something more than they can chew and they get into like this crazy shenanigan mess because I'm sure it's going to happen. I have an hour left of the audiobook so no problem. I'm gonna go finish it. But right now it's really hot in my room because the sun is coming into my room. It's it's just sweltering heat. So I'm gonna go outside. I'm gonna go for a walk, which is my evening walk so that I can get my steps in and then I'm gonna have dinner and then maybe I'll come back and check in with you guys to see where I'm at with that book. Also, I just realized that today me and my best friend who came back to Canada to visit her mom and her family because she moved to America to work there, is back in Canada and she wants to meet up with me. So we are gonna probably gonna hang out at night. So it'll be fun, it'll be fun. Yay, friends, after like a year and a half of not seeing everyone. <laughs> forgot where I left off and when I last saw you guys but basically I finished The Wife Upstairs and ahead of finishing The Wife Upstairs I actually went on Goodreads to go look at the reviews and to see like what the ratings were and my top friends and slash the people that I follow on Goodreads they all gave it kind of like a mediocre rating like they gave it like a three stars maybe a four stars some are five out of five but like majority of the times like it was like in the average range and then when we were getting towards the end, and I'm not going to say any spoilers, I was kind of like a little bit let down about what's happening. Like it was twisted and it was good, but I there was just like that like oomph factor that wasn't there for me to push it to like a 5 out of 5 or even like a really high 4 out of 5. So I ended up giving The Wife Upstairs a 3.5 out of 5 stars and I guess I'll like round it up to 4 stars on my Goodreads but like other than that it's still like a really atmospheric read. It's twisted, it's like very toxic, like we have a relationship that's really toxic and it kind of reminds me of a plot line like of that popular classic novel called Rebecca that recently got turned into a Netflix movie. So if you guys like that Netflix movie and if you guys like the plot line of two toxic people getting together um, for their own mutual benefits, then you're going to love The Wife Upstairs. But for my next read, I actually picked up a YA novel because this novel has been on my shelf for ever since it got released. I, I picked this one up because it was a total cover buy, but this one's called A Cuban's Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow, and I am walking and blind in this novel like I don't know what this one is about but so far I'm 30% in and I can 
tell you that it deals with a teenager who bakes a lot and who kind of has an enemies to lovers relationship with one of the guys in his in her class or competition that they're in and she is dealing with like a lot of family issues right now because someone in her family has unfortunately passed away so she has a lot of grief to handle she has a lot of memories of that person so it's pretty sad like it's not like as lighthearted as you would think so i'm interested in continuing on with this book it's only like eight hours long on audiobooks so i'm sure i can finish it very quickly and then maybe we can possibly wrap up this vlog I just wanted to say that this coffee is like Canada's coffee and I'm here to tell you that a lot of Canadians actually don't like Tim Hortons but we drink it because it's like that taste of coffee that we're familiar with and it's not necessarily like bad but it's not necessarily like good it's not the best coffee but it is very popular here in Canada I waited like 30 minutes for this coffee because I did Uber Eats and I've been doing so much Uber Eats this whole pandemic because I've been too like at first it started off with like me being too worried about going out too much but I still wanted to enjoy the food that I was eating like when I was going out so I was happy to pay for like meals like that but then now it's just like me being too lazy to actually go pick up the food so so just a quick reading update, but I finally finished the book and it just wasn't for me. I'm going to give it a two out of five stars, but I just did not care about our characters. I did not connect with the story. I thought it was so boring that I was literally begging for the audiobook to end at one point. But if it is still your most anticipated read or if it's on your shelf and you want to read it, do give it a try because I feel like my opinion is just one of many. It has a solid rating on Goodreads and it was just my personal thing and my personal preference. But on to the next book if I decide to pick up one for the reading vlog. I thought I would just hop on here to update you guys that I'm not reading anything anymore but um, I was on a Zoom call and the background was not working for like three seconds and I really really didn't want people to see what the heck was behind me. Like that is my closet. I usually keep it closed during my videos because I don't need people to know that I have an abundance amount of clothes and that none of them fit inside the closet and I do not fold my clothes properly so like oops but like I literally did not need my boss to also see the fact that I have like hanging posters on my wall too as well of like Korean men and my bookshelves too because it just shows that I do a lot of hoarding and it's really funny because at my old job when one time I did have to show my background my directors thought that I had boy bands like NSYNC and Backstreet Boys on my walls and they're a little bit older but like I was like what like why would I have Backstreet Boys on my walls like we're in 2020 like one why why who would still stand them is what I'm trying to say anyways that's just a little tip. Alrighty folks, so I think I'm just going to stop the reading vlog here. It's been two days. I've read four books, so I think I did pretty well. And I am very close to finishing around 70 books this month, which is like pretty good for me. It's not like the best, but I'm excited because now that I've picked up some books that were really good, I'm excited to start on my August TBR. I'm in the mood for a lot of office romances. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I've been working a lot and that now I want like an office romance so I could be like, oh, that's relatable, but not really. But anyways, I hope you guys had fun during this reading vlog. Hopefully you guys got to know a little bit more about myself. If my hair is like really messy right now, it's because I just filmed the TikTok where I threw myself on my bed and it did not look great. It did not look great. Follow me on TikTok because there I shall embarrass myself in front of all you guys. But I'll see you guys again next time. Bye! <laughs>